All right, what is up guys? Welcome back to the High Jedi channel. I hope you all are doing well during all this madness. In today's video, we will be going over what things you can do, accomplish, or have fun with in Stardew Valley version 1.4 in spring. With the amount of things you can do in Stardew Valley when first starting out, it can be quite overwhelming. Whether it's the community center, the museum, the dreaded mines, or whatever it may be, this video will be defining and going over what you can do in the the first month. Hopefully this guide will give you a better understanding of all the adventures you can have when starting a fresh file and give you a good idea of which direction you may want to take your game. I will also be going over what plants you can plant, which trees produce fruit, and which forageables, fish, and seasonal items are available. All in all, if you guys do enjoy this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and if you guys really enjoy this video, I will also be making a casual guide similar to this for each month month in Stardew Valley. Stick around to the end, some fresh news from Concerned Ape concerning a little sneak peek at a new item for the 1.5 update coming out in the near future. So if you guys are ready, let's go. So you started a fresh new file. You open up the game to a beautiful new world that is Stardew Valley. What do you do now? Well, you're gifted parsnips right off the bat, so get used to accessing your tools, tool belt, and go ahead and plant them. Especially starting out, you're going to need to understand and get familiar with a lot of the seeds and plants in Stardew Valley. Foraging and clearing out your farm is another task well suited for spring. Not only will it give you tons of materials required to build machines and other craftables, but you're going to need to start clearing space to maximize your farm, or make it the most beautiful beautiful thing anyone's seen. Whatever your plan may be, a chest or two is going to be a necessity. Starting out, it really doesn't matter where you put it, but obviously don't put it at the opposite end of your farm. Chop trees, clear grass for fiber and more free seeds, and chop rocks for a little stone and some mining experience. It's easy to get one or two levels for foraging and mining just from clearing a standard farm. Day 2 and Day 5 are days you can finally access fishing and the mines respectively. Day 2 you get a letter from Willy asking you to come down to the old docks if you get a chance. South end of the map access just south of Mayor Lewis's house. On day 5, you also get a letter referencing the newly acquired access to the mines via the northern route from your farm or access from the middle section of the map going past the community center. Fishing is going to be great for days when you don't feel like you have enough food or health items for the mines and for some decent cash and community center items. Mining is going to be required for a lot of items in Stardew Valley. From ores to coal to valuables, mining is a great adventure for spring and all throughout Stardew Valley. So get to fishing and get to mining. Spring is kind of a slow time of year for those highly profitable fruits and veggies like pumpkins or melons when you're starting off fresh. Get familiarized with them though, you'll need a variety for the community center, profit, food, etc. Potatoes, kale, cauliflower, jazz seeds, coffee beans, garlic, beans, parsnips, rhubarb, strawberries, tulips, and unmilled rice are the available crops for spring. Strawberries being the only one that's only available for the festival on the 13th, so be prepared with a little extra cash. Cauliflower, kale, and potatoes are great go-tos for decent profit or decent experience. Kale being the best experience and potatoes being the best for quick profit in my opinion. Again, potatoes are only my favorite because they have the off chance of producing multiple potatoes per individual bush planted. The flowers are wonderfully aesthetic to any farm, but don't stack in your inventory other than the quality and color of the flowers, so they end up taking quite a bit of more space than what you would usually like. The 
aforementioned festival, the Egg Festival, where you can buy the strawberry seeds is also a lot of fun. You can take part in an egg hunt with some of the local kids. Oh, and Abigail. <laughs> Be on the lookout for eggs scattered all throughout the town. Abigail is quite the competitor too. I'll let you guys discover what the winning prize is so you guys get to egg hunting. Oh, and by the way, happy late Easter for those of you who do, do celebrate it. Animals are great to start out with in spring as well. A chicken coop is the most cost effective and the eggs aren't too bad of a quick energy boost or turn them into mayonnaise for a few shekels. The barns are a bit more expensive but can effectively house a whole host of animals that each have individual ways of really good profit. You'll need some silos though for your hay storage. It's always best to have a silo up as well before you cut down all that free hay from your farm. Basically, it's just a tall, kind of scraggly looking grass scattered throughout your farm. Once you do commit to animals though, make sure to keep an eye on their hay levels. Don't want those cute creatures going a single day without food, now do we? The Best fishing spots for spring would have to be the mountain lake or just below Leah's house in Cinder Snap Forest. Whether you want experience or a nice boost in profit, those spots are the way to go. Make sure you have plenty of food items on you though, or worst case scenario, just eat some fish that you've caught like carp, chubs, or lower quality fish if you need the quick boost to get you throughout the day. The community center is another new hurdle to anyone starting off in spring. Once you've ventured into the dusty old rundown place with Mayor Lewis any day after day 5 on a non-rainy day and access the strange book inside, you'll get a letter from a wizard here in Stardew Valley by the name of Rasmodius. Once the letter is delivered, you can now find him in the western part of Cindersnap after a wonderfully tuned cutscene where you may or may not take part in a ritual concerning certain psychedelic, you can now have full access to the bundles or what I call the donating book alien thingies. Once you have access to the CC, you can now start donating items. You'll unlock more sections of the community center as you donate your first items. Forgeables are something you definitely have to look out for because they are seasonal items that can only be acquired during its respective one. Just like the plants, the, each season has individual plants and forgeables that are respective to their only season. Knowing the map, and forge spawns is a must early game for sure too. You're gonna want to know where they spawn on your way to the mines, on the way to your favorite fishing spot, etc. So get out there and get to adventuring. The Flower Dance is another festival that you can attend only in spring. They have a nice cart with some collectibles and you can ask your favorite bachelor or bachelorette to dance. Also, this event takes place on the 24th, so mark your calendar or just visit the one in towns outside of Pierre's place. They will refuse, however, unless you've wooed them up to four hearts by gifting them their favorite items. Spring is also a decent time to plant orchard style fruit trees that you can purchase from Pierre or acquire it random from chests in the Skull Cavern mines. Although granted, you usually don't have enough cash to work with to be able to purchase these fruit trees, but getting them planted early is amazing because you won't get a harvest of fruit the first season in Stardew Valley with a 28 day maturation period. It's better to plant them sooner rather than later if you get my drift, but if you plant the summer type trees in spring and allow them to mature sure you will absolutely get a continued harvest of fruit from your fruit tree in summertime. So either way, whether you're going for aesthetics or otherwise, it's probably good to plant them early spring. All in all, spring is the first month in Stardew Valley where you can define what your save file can be or will be. You have endless ways to go with it and any one of them is right and never wrong. Go with the flow or even go against it, it's all up to you, but hopefully with the spring guide you can get started right away. Also guys, this is the new info from Twitter from Concerned Ape himself. So he went ahead and put out a poll recently and the winner in 
ended up being the banana tree, which was basically a selection of four different fruit trees. Um, and yeah, banana ended up winning here. But the fact of the matter is he also mentioned mango tree as the runner up. So we will see guys what comes out with the Stardew Valley update 1.5. It will be quite a ways away from here. I'm thinking more towards the end of this year, probably more towards like Christmas, uh, January, February, somewhere around that, that time. But I will keep you guys updated in the meantime. So I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait to see what he has to offer. And if this guy did help you, squish that like and sub button if you haven't already. Like I said as well, let me know what you think of the spring guide to just kind of get you guys an idea of what to do in each season. And if you guys do enjoy, I will absolutely make one for each month in Stardew Valley. Much, much more coming in the future. And I do have a really big announcement uh, probably coming here in the next couple days. So I will let you guys know via Twitter and I it will be coming out with my next video. So as always, guys, stay lit, stay up, and stay high, Jedi. Peace.